Hi, I'm Darren Emerson. I'm here in Venice. I'm from London, or well, Essex. And I'm a DJ, been producing for over 25 years. Used to be a part of Underworld, uh, Underwater Records. Um, I've got a detailing records at the moment, you know, um, doing the thing called the White Lamp, so keeping busy, yeah. And um, yeah, lucky enough to be here today. I got inspired, I suppose, being at, you know, at the age of three, I was given loads of records um, and a record deck, an old wooden one with the arm and it would drop down and so I used to stack these tracks up. Couldn't even read, so I was like, you know, three years old. And uh, so I, I would sit up in my bedroom playing all these like records that my mum and dad gave me. And then, um, so that was always without knowing, looking back, that was definitely the why I got into sort of using, you know, vinyl and plastic and, and playing with music. You know? And so I was lucky enough to get a pair of decks built driven uh, at the age of 14. So um, I'd done that and I was teaching myself how to cut and scratch in my bedroom. Jazz, Jazzy M, who was um, on LWR, which was like a pirate radio station, he really got me into the house music scene. I was listening to that on Tuesdays and Thursdays, it's called The Jacking Zone. Um, so that really got me into the house music because it had that electro feel to it, to, to it still. It still had that sort of, you know, the drum machines and stuff. And I was because I was into a lot of soulful stuff as well, being a, an old Essex boy in the 80s and that there was a lot of the soul boy thing going on and the old disco. All that sort of like was a bit of a, a melting pot, should I say. And, um, and then we was going to Spectrum on Monday nights, which was like Oakenfold's acid sort of like night, which was down at Heaven, which was amazing. And I was just there for the music all the time. I was a proper little vinyl junkie, you know. I really got into the alternative music as well, which was fantastic um, with Future sort of like going down there. Um, Nancy Noyes and Paul and all these people were playing, just, just stuff mixed in with house music. So you could listen to a bit of Pink Floyd or it was like just, just different things and Italian music as well, just the Balearic thing. And so by that time, I reckon 18, I met this guy who um, I was drinking down the local pub with and he had a brother-in-law uh, who was in a band. Um, called Underworld. Uh, so basically, he said, my brother-in-law has got this studio and he's looking for a DJ. Do you want to um, do you want to hook up? So of course, I was DJing a little bit, but the next thing, because I was looking to Weatherall and Paul Oakenfold, who were doing the Happy Mondays and Weatherall had like Primal Scream and that. So I was like, okay, yeah, I know I want to get into the studio now. This is, you know, I had a little sampler when I was 14. Forgot about that. So I had a sampler and at least it's like a uh, sequencer. So I was um, always into technology, always been a little techno geek, even with like ZX Spectrums, like games, techno, technology, you know, I was always into that, moving forward with new things.
artist, I'm very open and I'm, you know, I love my music, so I'm very open to try different things as well. I'm not narrow-minded, I like to sort of try different things. Um, uh, you know, even as a DJ, you know, I don't really play one style of music. You know, some DJs just would use one genre. I think it's hard for journalists or people sometimes to sort of um, pigeonhole me or, you know, even though I'm known as a techno DJ from doing all the underworld stuff and that I've always been a house head as well, you know, so I just try to mix it all in. So, like, I, I'm just an artist that just likes to move forward, use new technology, just try different things out, experiment, you know, but still you have the, back, you have the root of, you know, the techno and, and the house thing when I'm making sort of dance music. But the art of mixing and getting the beat synced up is gone, really, because I used to ride it, you know, I'd cut it in and then, and then until it's in. So it's like, Derek May was the only person I could, could, could see do that like that, you know, and it was, um, we used to do Ministry of Sound together quite a lot. Now, I, I was I'm very on the same sort of tip as Derek, you know, just you, you scratch it and then you worry about getting it in, you know, into the pitch. But, um, but now it's all sort of done for you, really. So that's gone, so you end up, sometimes you can overdo it with all the effects and that, and, you know, I was just trying it out today and seeing what's around. Inspirations, well, come on, it's everything. It's, it's just life, isn't it, really? It's not just music, it's just, you know, we should have another baby. You know, everything you just take into your head. So things come out without even realising sometimes, you know? It's like, just things go into your brain and when you're in the studio, you just come out. Yeah, I get my inspirations from every, everywhere, really. You know, not just one thing. Loads of good music, you know, Spotify is fantastic for that because I just listen to everything, you know, whether it's alternative, or just like loads of weird out there music, jazz, you know, so, I'm very open, you know, and I think that sometimes it's great to be in the studio to have that sort of head. 